Broden. This kind of situation is Kingsley Coman. That's it. No doubt about it now. And Coman, the player on loan from Juventus, has just knocked his parent club out of the Champions League. And yes, indeed, that was Coman who knocked out Juventus from the Champions League. And Bob, going into this game, what did you think was going to be the outcome of this tie? Honestly, I Bayern would go through quite comfortably because I thought maybe just in the first leg, Juventus showed, you know, they did what I expected them to do, but I just thought in Germany that Bayern would have, you know, seen them off quite comfortably, obviously, because they would have controlled a lot of possession, which they did. But as you can see, Juventus counter-attacked pretty much perfectly in the first half and could have been a lot more than 2-0 up, so... But that's in your... Yeah, sorry. Me, what was going through your mind? I think it was. I don't even want to. Kind of the way they scored those goals just from remind you know it just seemed like Guardiola was a bit naive. It seemed like he underestimated them a little bit because even though both of them were you know major mistakes, it seemed like you know Morata. He's not even a quick player, so. There were other players in that Bayern team who could have kept up with him. But everyone, you know, except from the players around him, everyone else just kind of watched and just waited for him as he ran for the whole length of the pitch and then squared it to um, Quadrado to score. So I feel like they just kind of underestimated them. Well, Lindy, what do you think about Yeah, I was just saying, uh, well, Marta did show a ton of pace. I think one thing that... Pep Guardiola did, which I didn't understand why he didn't do from the start. But for some reason, at the start, um, I don't think Alaba was playing centre back with um, what's that guy Kimmich. I think that was the other centre back at that in that game. Um, I think it was Bernat that was playing left back or something. Someone, someone was in an op- or like on obscene position. I think maybe Alonso was playing centre back or something. But then uh, you could see Alaba lost the ball, you know, um, going up forward. And then he tried so hard, like running at full speed. But I think he already had used most of his energy trying to attack and everything. But then Morata, the indecisiveness of the Bayern players, even Alaba, like that is the sort of situation where, you know, you commit a professional foul to keep your team from potentially, you know, being caught on the brink but then it didn't seem like there was so much on like it was Morata and um, Dybala was on no not Dybala um, Morata and Quadrado were the only two people more or less up front of them so I you know it didn't seem like there was much of a threat going forward but then surely Quadrado showed them I mean the composure he showed I remember when I was watching it my mom was right beside me and she was like shoot shoot and then I was like I was like, I, I was like calm, and then when he took the ball the way he did, I just applauded it. It's like the composure. Yeah, that, that was such an excellent finish. And um, how did Juve blow it? Because like going into the second half, you thought that like, Juve deserved to be two, three goals. Morata had a goal before, and then after the half, but like all of a sudden, Bayern just came in all storming. Um, I felt like they blew it in terms of the chances they missed in the first half because they should have been a lot more than two up. So if they're taking their chances better, then you could have afforded to sit back like they did in the second half. But because they didn't, the second all Bayern needed to do was get that first goal. And then after that, the momentum would have kind of brought them through. And you kind of thought after Bayern got that first goal, the year, you know, the second one's coming. But they're also quite unlucky in the sense that, I mean, the equaliser came so late in the second half as well, so I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Yeah, it's sad. And what does it say about Juventus, especially going into the Serie A race? What does it say about the type of quality they have to go into this game? Oh, yeah. I think they were missing yeah. the baller. I mean, they're, they're going to win it. Like, they've gone, was it 16, 17 games, you know, like, with unbeating since that, like, uh, dreadful start by their standards. It's just um, unbelievable to think that 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 has happened and such a turnaround has happened for Massimo Allegri. 
Yeah, so I, 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 I promise to all of them. Yeah, especially how they started the season because like they were around like 16. And Bob, what about Bayern Munich? Because like obviously we look at them as favorites for this tournament. It's I don't see why. <laughs> I honestly don't see why. I've never thought of them as favorites. I always thought Barcelona were definitely favorites because I look at the two teams now, even though they're not matched up against each other necessarily. I look at those teams now and I see a lot more holes in that Bayern team than I do in the Barcelona team because to me the Bayern team where the difference between the Bayern team the Bayern team had you know were going into the game without any sort of you know positives without any sort of like you know comfortable aspects knowing that they all were already winning the game etc Barcelona did yet Bayern were still the one who looked more shaky than Barcelona so yeah. it's the kind of thing where like I don't really see why they're favourites in that sense. Yeah, but well, you know, the kind of lot of injured players, Robin, Boateng, Benyatta. Like I mean, they're back four. You know, apart from Lam on the right and Alaba, well, he wasn't featured in the left back position. Like it was their make. It was like you know, players that aren't necessarily um, accustomed to those roles. So I can understand how. Um, they were exposed at times of so on the counter so easily opened up at times and it's just like um, he, he, he is daring I think and I think we'll talk more about how they turn around the second half but then I think um, Juve, Juve made terrible decisions what, like what coach one? to make the, the subs those three subs the three subs he made contrast to the Subs Guardiola made was so like they, they um, Juve's subs had no impact on the game at all. Or you know, you got, got Coleman and and who else? Thiago came on. Came on. Yeah. I yeah, thought Coleman was man of the match, in my opinion. Thiago? I said Coleman. Coleman. Man of the match. Yeah, and it's Four. and it's funny, like you just look at. No, it's Costa. Costa was not match. Like, ah, okay, okay. Cost- I, I, we have a debate, so like we're going to do this organized. Bob, why do you think Coleman was man of the match? Impact. Impact. Because Costa was on the pitch the whole time, yes. But in terms of impact, I don't think Bayern would have won that game if Coleman didn't come on. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's literally the coach's mindset. They were not crossing the ball at all. Like how many crosses could you count in the first half that they did none? It was only after like seven to five minutes in that they decided, okay, let's cross the ball in. That was when Guardiola decided to change his tactic. He had Muller and Lewandowski up front. They didn't have enough space around the edge of the box to walk the ball through as they normally would have. So I mean, Costa to get that um, Lewandowski goal, the cross he. Know, to create the space it was him he was just so threatening throughout the game every single time he had the ball at his feet he was making you know he had the uh, UV defense guessing like he had them on their toes like okay let's be on our guard now because you know we know he's trickery if you give him any ounce of space he would take take it and capitalize and it's cross for think, oh, that's why Costa was my yeah. pick his cross for the Lewandowski goal was like just absolutely amazing and yeah. Bayern, they drew Benfica this morning. Like, yeah. how do you he's see that strong. going? Benfica, they're quite strong. They beat them on the way. <laughs> Let's not. Let's <laughs> relax. That's, there's levels. There's levels to this thing. There's no chance. Bayern, Benfica have no chance. In my opinion, they'll lose both legs. Both legs? But Porto beat Bayern last season in the first leg 3 1, quite convincingly. Yeah, I know, but I mean, you know, that was one of those kind of very old games. I really. Would not expect Bayern to, to struggle against Benfica. So it's done and dusted. There's no point of us talking about it. I mean, if they don't, um, what's it called? Um, if they don't like mess up in terms of like their centre backs that they have. Yeah. If they're still going in with the same centre backs, then they might struggle a little bit. But the thing is, I can't see. Benfica only have one chance, and that's in Portugal. And that, you know, they need to go back with like a two goal lead or something like that. And I doubt they're going to be that much better than Bayern on the day. Because when they go back to Germany, I can't see them 
you know, even Benfica are way worse than Juventus are, yeah. if we're being honest. But. Yeah. but, like, on Benfica, like, they lost their coach, Troy Chase, so how surprised have you they've, been, they've gone this far? Especially after what happened two seasons ago when they lost a bunch of the top players. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, in my opinion, even Wolfsburg are the worst team in the draw, and they're still somehow going far, you know, things. So, you know, there's some definite surprises in the quarterfinal, but I'm expecting both, you know, Benfica and Wolfsburg to go out. To go out. And talking about favourites, we move on to Barcelona. Barcelona, and they kind of they beat Arsenal without getting out of second gear. And, like, what's gone wrong? For Wenger or Lemonade. Well, do I start? Um, you are right by saying Boston and more or less. I think they could have played with. I think I mean MSN. They could have played with anything short of like their hands behind their backs, and still would have beaten Arsenal comfortably. You know, they help check going to. Um, what's it called, in terms of going up with Connor. I mean, it's only in Arsenal that you could imagine something like that happening. But, um, um, Ospina, actually, I think there are some saves which, I don't know, I think I saw something on Twitter saying that Ospina, he's, he's, he's like, I don't catch the ball often, or I don't handle the ball well, yeah. but then when it comes to making great saves, I can. There was that chance that when Neymar gave Messi and Messi controlled. I mean, to pick that pass out from like 50 yards out or 40 yards out and pick that pass and then controlled by Messi before then, you know, striking that goal and then not spinning making the save. It's just breathtaking. And, I mean, just you just look at that front three. Each of them scored um, in the last game against Arsenal. Like, you just think the level of concentration that a team like the opposing team would have to keep each and every one of them quiet. And it's not even just like, you know, individually, it's like that inter like, you know, that connecting play is just um astronomical and their midfield players like the unsung heroes, Rakitic and such, even in yesterday, I mean he hasn't been mentioned in terms of Barcelona season more or less at all, if if I was to say. Um it's just, it's just. I'm sorry. I'm gonna talk about how Fenga has been <laughs> terrible. Yeah. So, um, well, there's some, some. I think I said something like, out of 17 games they've played this season, Arsenal have only won three or four of them. Like so, not this season. This year. This year. So you know, for a team trying to win the league, pathetic, pathetic. Oh, absolutely pathetic he shouldn't be in the job come June or July whenever it's just the season ends come May sorry he should just pack his things and leave he will still say stuff like in the press conference like oh this just makes me go ask them more I'm like dude like no one sees a sinking ship and then says oh no it's fine I can, like, I can still do this I can still like it's not, even, it's not even sinking anymore it's like already like in rubble like it's just everywhere and Arsenal really do need a change like people have said you know be careful what you wish for and all that but I mean at one stage you have to move on you can't hold on to the um, past and the history that he has made for Arsenal right now it's pathetic you think this season Man City fell off Chelsea were non-existence Manchester United is still going through the same problems of some transition players that you think Arsenal surely surely this would be their season and look at them injuries to key players at certain times Santa Cazola going injured um, Cochrane going injured and just seeing how the team falls apart around those, those players and, and Ramsey just being like I, um, shout out to um, Tosi Good Times he um, wrote an article Regarding uh, uh, Arsenal, the club pundits, if you follow them on Twitter, if you can, yeah. um, basically talking about how he was analysing like you know, the underperformers in the Arsenal season thus far, and then how he described Ramsey. He was like, Aaron, why are you Croft turning there, Ramsey? Like, <laughs> um, Croft, um, you, uh, what's his name again? First name? Yeah. Famous guy. 
quite a few hundred right, drops or something. Right. Yeah, 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 quite, yeah no, quite, quite a few. Yeah. So I was like, why are you cross training there? Like, he just does that. It's like, you know, now he's injured, and I'm just like, <sighs> Arsenal just needs so much to change. So Arsenal again needs to leave. And they, you described a bunch of problems, and it looks like, to some extent, it's beyond Arsene Wenger. Like, it's the players aren't good enough to start with. They don't have, like, a proper number nine. Um, it looks like most of the midfield players are too immature and they don't have that stuff of champions, that winning mentality. Yeah, I think that's what it comes to because the likes of Ozil, Sanchez, you know, even Giroud, you know, how many clubs would t- how many clubs would, would take him, you know, in the Premier League? Quite a lot. So it's not as if they don't have the players. It's just that they don't really have mentality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say... So I was going to say that, like Leicester this season, right? Yeah. Mares, who at the start of the season, or early on in the season, I said would win Pair for Player of the Year, and I said stand by my lovely, uh, <laughs> um, what's it called, decision then. Conte and Robert Huth, and also in Goal Casper Schmeichel as well. You know, we, obviously we can't forget Vardy, that, that spine for them has been on Unbelievable. Kante is relentless. Against, who did they beat this? Uh, against Watford when they were playing them um, not so long ago. He was relentless. He would lose, lose the ball away or give the ball away or lose possession and he will be at you within seconds at your feet. Just hustling and hounding you, just making you go off your balance or something. It's just the, the hunger they have is just unimaginable I think how does it you know how does a team like that gain such hunger and a team who has a coach who has done it before and wants to do it again can't then recreate that level of hunger or desire it's just unbelievable yeah, yeah it's just and that's, the yeah, thing. Sad. that's the funny thing as well because the funny thing about that team our Arsenal team as well is bar a few players who were, you know, who have won championships, etc. But not necessarily in terms of Sanchez. Ozil, yes, but not Sanchez. Like, not necessarily being at the core of their squads in other yeah. teams when they won the league. So, you yeah. can't really necessarily speak of them in that way. So, you, you know, you look at the Arsenal team, you say, where's, where's that winning mentality going to come from if everyone around you hasn't won anything? Like, <laughs> no one's winning anything. You, you don't just spring up a winning mentality most of the time from nowhere. So I think signings are also been an issue as well. Yeah. He's always buying kids. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even that. It's not like he's, he's buying the wrong kids nowadays. Like, for example, like you can take an example of when he bought like Campbell and Henry during his early days, but now he's buying like guys like <laughs> who, who he possibly doesn't know anything about. The scouts yeah. department just brings them in. After a year, they're like gone somewhere else or like they're on the bench. So it's like uh-huh. recruitment is all over the place at Arsenal. And it's yeah. all it's all well and good us talking about like what Wenger has done wrong. But like who do you think can replace him? Okay, I have, I have a number of candidates right now. Um, Carl Ancelotti. That's, that's not going to happen. Job at the moment. <laughs> no, he's got to buy him. He's got to buy him. Right. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. Uh, shit. Um, I actually would not mind. I wouldn't mind Brendan Rodgers, but then I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I honestly, I honestly, I mean, he. I actually enjoyed his tactics. Like, I actually really enjoyed his tactics. I thought he was one of the like smarter managers in terms of tactics. He just didn't have the players to pull it off. Oh. Like, I mean, when they came close with Liverpool, you know, yeah. SAS and stuff. Yeah. Like that was that. That was him in his prime, like in terms of like coaching prime, like having those core level of players with the hunger, Suarez, um, Storage, who was fitter than usual, and everything. So it's just like I, I won't mind him, like and um, since uh, damn, I don't know what this guy will be doing. Uh, I'm forgetting. Well, even Mancini, I don't, I don't really think I like Mancini, like. I see his teams, but I don't really see. I don't really see him like as a coach, like his imprints on them. 
Yeah. Like surely the teams he's had have, have been more attacking yeah. than um, like very when he was at very and stuff. But is it is it really on a on? I, I'll say Brendan Rodgers for now. That, yeah. That's my that's my that's my pick. I guess well, I said Benitez as well. Yeah. He obviously he's in Jordi Town. <laughs> Benetton, Newcastle, and I guess maybe that's why Arsene Wenger is in the job. Like even three of us that were saying he should go out, we're still scratching our heads on like who should replace him. And yeah, but like let's let's shift our focus a bit to Barcelona. They got a draw versus Atletico. Uh, Barca they've won six games in a row versus Atletico, but we've never beaten Atletico in the Champions League. And like we're on this like amazing thirty-eight game run. So like Bob like. Are Barcelona unstoppable? Yeah, I think so. Because the, <laughs> the thing is, I can't see. Atletico are a good team, okay. but even when you go to Madrid, I can't see them beating you by, you know, even if they win that game, I can't see them being out of sight enough that you can't put, that you're not going to pull it back at them. Yeah. At the new cap anyway. So slightly, you know, and even right now, I don't necessarily think they're in the best form. Like they drew they, they beat PSV by penalties. Like a team as poor as PSV compared to them on penalties. Like and it's not as if PSV played amazingly well. I first got Madrid, you know, at the back and stuff, they're still solid, you know, with Godin and Jimenez and the rest. But going forward, it seems like all the signings they brought this season, they just, most of them just haven't clicked. But yeah, like, like, like you look at Jackson, Mar- Jackson, Mar- Jackson Martinez, Martinez who went to yes. China. It's gone back uh, to, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I don't necessarily played well. It's only, you know, Torres is Torres. <laughs> Griezmann, well, without Griezmann, but, you know, you wonder where they'd be. Yeah. But don't you think, like, you know, the, he, I saw his stat saying that, um, what's it called? Diego Simeone has in over 100, in over 230 something games, his coach for Atletico Madrid, they have kept over 140 something clean sheets. Like, yeah. isn't that, that's, that's quite a formidable. Yeah, that's what and, I'm saying. Yeah. And yeah. you can see, you can count on them, but then you look at MSN, you know, you can have all those stats, but, you know, if those guys want to play, they're going to play regardless. Yeah. So that's the, that's, that's the thing. And, What's, it, what's the name? They can keep if going forward. You just look at each each team's attacks, and you wonder who's going to be more threatening. Like you know, Barcelona's defense yeah. has never really been the greatest, but you know, are they really going to be bothered by Atletico Madrid's attack right now? Not, mm-hmm. not really. But then you look on the other end. You know, Atletico they can have you know the best defense in the country, blah blah, blah or anything like that. But going up against those three players, you know. You kind of have to count on them having a bad day more than your defenders playing well. Because if they're having a good day, there's really not much you can do to stop them. Yeah, and just to add like a stats to like your argument, Bob. Only once has Barcelona drawn a blank this season, and that was against Athletic Bilbao and our embarrassing four zero defeat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, and I can only see one winner. Yeah, and we have a we have an interesting tie this weekend against Villarreal, who like I think might be able to beat us, but like. And in the Europa League, they've been going strong. They've beaten Napoli. They've beaten Bayer Leverkusen. They have a draw, a quarterfinal draw for Sparta Prague. Can they go all the way? Possibly. I don't see what not. But then, you know, Europe is Sevilla's competition. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. No chance though. Yeah, and it's it's funny because like I see like they don't really get that much recognition from like. I watched like the ITV highlight show, like no mention of them, and I'm like, they've just beaten like two really difficult teams. Like apart from like Dortmund, they've had arguably the hardest running in this tournament. Like Napoli were favorites. We discussed it a couple of weeks ago. But Leverkusen, they were like almost got past Roma, and it's funny that they don't get that like attention and recognition. And they they really are a really good side. Yeah. Are they not third? Oh, they're fourth behind Real Madrid, sadly. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I forgot there's like a different Madrid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And like, let's move on to Paris Saint Germain. They dispatched Chelsea with ease. They've won league on with eight games to spare. They could have won them with ten games to spare if they didn't lose to Lyon, draw to Montpellier. And 
But what's different between PSG now and last season? And what's also different between Ligue 1 last season and now? Because like last season, this was a totally yeah. different title race. That's why I think it's been so, so much easier this season because they've done so well and so consistently well that they can afford to, you know, like every time before a, Premier, um, a Champions League game, they'd rest, you know, some of their key players so they'd be fresh for the Champions League and so I think that's made a big difference for them in the Champions League. Even though last season they still beat Chelsea with 10 men. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, so, you know, that, that shows how bad Chelsea are but at the same time, I just feel like they were a lot more consistent and they had a much stronger team this year as well, especially with the addition of Di Maria. I think he's made a big difference to their team. And I feel like Lucas Moura has come a long way since last season as well. Yeah, I was going to mention him. He, he, he played well in the first, in the first leg, really well. Like it was, it was a, uh, you know, being a pest to the uh, Chelsea back line. And, uh, yeah, I think going forward, and who are they facing in the... Uh, oh, they're facing um, Manchester City. It's going to be the... Derby of the two Qatari, the two Arab investment funds, the Qatari Investment oh, okay. Authority versus the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority. So much oh, we know on, on that day, <laughs> Arab money will be flying. <laughs> yeah, you just see a bunch of like a bunch of. Well, <laughs> let's not go too deep into that. But like, but for like before we go on to the tie against Man City, you mentioned Chelsea, who were poor. Antonio Conte might come in. Like, how do you see him yeah, fitting into the Premier League? He's already, obviously, he's already confirmed that he will step down from the Italy job after the um, after the Euros. So, I feel like he's one of those coaches that he's shown that he does have, have a winning mentality, but obviously he doesn't have any um, experience in the Premier League. But, you know, as bad as Chelsea have been, I don't necessarily feel like he necessarily he doesn't necessarily have that big of an expectation because they've been so bad of late that you know they just need someone who's going to come in they're going to secure a Champions League sport comfortably you know they might seem like you know for the most part of the season be in a row challenging for the titles but not necessarily running away with it and I feel like you know even if they finish second even second if they finish second next season they'll probably see it as a, as a success so I feel like they're just looking for another long term coach because they don't want to be doing all the sacking stuff all over again okay, okay. and Olumde, what? how do you see this tie against like the City tie versus PSG going oh um, City they've just been so poor defensively I, I can't see you know PSG transfer their um, um, league performances to the European games and you can just see them um, for getting more using the confidence from you know being able to I mean to win the league they won 9-0 you know like mm-hmm. what's a fast what, what's a way to win the league so um, that, they, they must be using so much confidence and I can see City I mean De Bruyne he's coming back from injury um, company has been you know he just got himself injured again and I don't know how long Otamendi will be out for but you think you look at that back phone how you know compared to the start of the season where I think I even admitted on here that Man City could run away with the league, but you know how football, <laughs> how things have changed since then. Yeah, we all, um, we all admitted that on this. So. Yeah, I felt like they missed De Bruyne as yeah. well. I felt like his injury, his long injury, was a massive blow. So massive, and I just think now it's like. I can't even see PSG winning that game. Away from home, City, they're not exactly the best, you know. Going forward, you think Aguero, Silva, maybe, you know. But then um, Sterling isn't necessarily turning heads with his performances. Yeah, it's Ray, it's all yeah, it's Ray. Well, he, he only seems to kick on after like 18 minutes or something. So he just seems to take his time. I, I see PSG going through over the two legs. Yeah, Bob, you too? Yeah, I go for PSG. Man City in bad form and. At the back, they've been very shaky all season. And I feel like it's, yeah, can't really look past PSG. I mean, I've been impressed with them, especially against Chelsea. Yeah, and do you think, like, this city form has taken, like, took a particularly, like, strong nosedive after the Pep Guardiola announcement? Because, like, after the Pep Guardiola announcement, they lost, I think, 3-1 to Leicester, then 5-1, and they got knocked out of the FA Cup. Yeah, I feel like Pep... Pellegrini, you know, he's already won the, 
he's only one you know thinks thinks that he can win here so it's kind of like you know, except from Champions League but I don't necessarily think he was ever realistically expecting to win it so I mean he, I think one of his goals was to take them beyond you know the last 16 which he has yeah, done so, so I think in that case it's like okay tick but I think he lost to Jerson when as soon as they announced uh, you know Pep is coming soon people are looking around like why why bother playing a hard song because mm-hmm. you know in a couple of months time someone else will be here telling us what to do and Tim, it's just Tim. Uh, worth it now yeah Tim how do you think the what do you think Pep Guardiola will do first once he gets the City job and who do you think will be his kind of the areas of the pitch that he'll want to improve and the players who will use to actually improve them yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know for a fact that Pep Guardiola has met with um, Ikai Gundogan's agent and so that tells you like the first area of the picture wants to improve is centre midfield maybe get a replacement for Yaya Toure I also see him adding uh, new wing backs because Zabaleta is old and might be past his best and might want to refresh that area and also feel him adding a striker like a striker to maybe play with Aguero or maybe a striker who they can rely on when Aguero is injured because like, Aguero is injured for half the season so the striker can be assured that we're out playing time. But like in terms of players going, I can see Mangala going. I can see Yair yeah, Turi leaving. And I, next I can, next yeah, season. Yeah, I can see him leaving next season because I feel that like like for example when Pep came to Barcelona, he let Ronaldinho go. He wanted Eto to go but he stayed. He wanted he let Deco go and that's the kind of man he is. Like if he doesn't feel he can work with you, you're out of the door. And yeah, actually hasn't really shown that he can play up to that consistent level. And Pep Guardiola is very, very intense. Like, if he doesn't feel he can play at that level, you're gone. And that's why Bastian Schweinsteiger is at Manchester United, because he didn't feel that Schweinsteiger could play at the NG level as he wanted for Bayern. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And, uh, like, we're going to move on to another rich club, but it's, this is a mismatch. This is Real Madrid Wolfsburg. And once again, to get an easy tie, it's so weird. Yeah. Like, like they had Apoel one season. <laughs> they had CSK. They keep on getting easy ties. Bro. They had Spurs one season, which was also relatively easy. And I guess, like, Bob, like, you know more about Wolfsburg than I do. So, like, where do you see this Wolfsburg team giving Real Madrid problems? Um, I feel like for Real Madrid to have their the only kind of problems they can have will be self-inflicted rather than Wolfsburg because obviously I watched them play United twice this season and we were bad more than they were good if you know what I mean so it's the kind of thing where if Real Madrid play you know, anywhere near their best they'll win both games comfortably so I don't really see Wolfsburg really doing much to hurt them at all you know they've got a few players you know Draxler's a good player but Besides him, you know, the rest of the players around him, Scherler, I think, is pretty poor. Max Cruz is pretty poor. Like, I mean, in comparison to Real Madrid players, so I don't really see where they can really hurt Real Madrid, if I'm honest. Yeah, and yeah, I, I was, was going to agree with that. Like, um, Real Madrid has to give them a chance. So if Real Madrid are as dominant as they can be, I think they really need Benzema back. But I think... Um, also, who's that guy? Lucas Vasquez. Lucas Vasquez. He oh. has been fun to watch for me when he comes on for Real Madrid. He, he's not. He, he's willing to do the uh, traditional winger thing and not just cutting every time. He can, you know, run to the byline and find a cross. So he's been very good. And yeah, like I said, like uh, Bob said, I don't see anything but like yeah. uh, Real Madrid win coming from that. Yeah, and speaking about Benzema, do you guys hear about his latest scandal? Yeah, something. Um, I read it a few days ago. What What are the French people saying he's involved in now? Oh, uh, is it has been involved in money laundering? Apparently. Money laundering. This <laughs> yeah. stuff. Like, apparently, <laughs> apparently, the company that he owns, like, is, is a main shareholder of. Like, they were involved in drug trafficking. They had a bunch of losses, and like, the feds think it's a front for drug trafficking. And I'm just like, after the sex tape scandal, <laughs> like, this is just terrible for a player. Literally, and I just like I said, once I saw him taking pictures with Rihanna, I knew 
against Sevilla they're without Ramos they're without Pepe but Sevilla also without their three main attacking threats kind of Bianca Vanega and Vitolo missed the game due to injuries and suspensions and Sevilla they're without a win away in La Liga this season I think they're the only club in Europe not to have that I mean, we might have to check that obviously they were Lito versus Basel doing through the next round Bob do you see them winning at the Bernabeu with Real Madrid's poor form or at least getting a draw, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, honestly, the thing is about Real Madrid, I mean, if Bale was, is, do you think Bale would be fit to start? But yeah, he played, he played against Las Palmas, but it was awful. It was really awful compared to, like, the Bale well, that came before well, injury. Yeah, so, I don't know. It depends. Like, the thing about Real Madrid is that I just never, because of parents, I just never really know what direction they're really going in. So, yeah. even... You know, like someone like James Rodriguez, like to me, he's just such a luxury player. Like, there was really no space for him in that team. If, they were, you know, if every going to play to their potential, there really wasn't space for him. Yeah, you know, they bought him in, they spent 60 million, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, I look at, I look at him now and I just think, you know, he deserves to be the player at a club in, in order for him to get the best out of him. And he's... No way, you know, he's a few, in terms of pecking order, he's a few, you know, up, above him already, so. Yeah. I don't know, but I feel like maybe it'll probably be like a score draw, like 2-2. Two, two. Two, two, yeah, and even speaking about James, Real Madrid are trying to sell him this summer, according to Ask. They're trying to sell James and Isco, and they want more at the back, which is so crazy. I don't know if they'll, I don't know what they'll get, or what they're planning to recoup from James, but I can't see anyone paying more than... 35 million max. Nice. Yeah, for Ahmed, they, they won like 80. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> in, 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 in this one, on one. But you never know. Like, did Walker, the, did Walker just happen? <laughs> uh, like, how did they expect to get 80 million? Yeah, with with all the with all this money flowing in the Premier League, like next season, the winner is going to get 150 million pounds. So it's like. Yeah, but no one's going to look at Hammers and feel like, yeah, he's worth. <laughs> Galactico, like he's worth breaking the transfer record for. Like no way. <laughs> yeah. I I think I just can't wait for when Leicester actually win the league, and then how, like from the start of the season, how commentators have just been like, can Leicester, you know, um, re <laughs> retain can it. they retain re, the like refine the form that they had mm-hmm. last season? Can they like everything they would do? And English media is so lovely at that. They would just yeah. compare you to the hold that on to the next five years. <laughs> Well, literally, yeah. if you get every single season, like, oh, Vardy did this last season, can he yeah. do this again? And it's like, at this time last season, he had so so and so on. It's like, uh, Mahrez, he's not, he's not going to be a lesser player to come next season. He's not. There's no way. It's yeah. just, it's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Yep. Yeah. Like I said to people, people are like, yeah, but he signed a new deal. Suarez signed a new deal with Liverpool. <laughs> Bale, Bale yeah, signed, signed a new deal. deal. Yeah. Yeah. Top exactly. Number. Yeah, I think that's just to get more money from the clubs because they know yeah. like. I'm telling you, Man U will buy him for thirty mil. Oh. <laughs> and and even Ranieri said that like if a player comes to him and tells him that his dream is to go elsewhere to another club, that he would tell the lad that he should go and he should enjoy himself. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not- I don't know, the fact that they'll, they'll, they'll be playing Champions League football and all this kind of stuff, I don't necessarily think any players, you know, they'll kind of want to keep the fairy tale on for at least next season and then after they drop off a bit, their best players will go. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would do if I was one of their players, but, you know, money talks, you know, if someone yeah. whispers that, you know, they're going to quadruple your wage, you know, you know, your neck is going to itch a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But then again, it comes to, like, the point that, like, a lot of these players, like, I'm not saying that they're one season wonders, but like they might think of it. They might be like, okay, we had the, this remarkable season this year. Like, do we really think that it's going to repeat itself next year? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so that's why, like, this next summer, yeah, have an average season. They're no, they're not going to get anywhere near the same amount for their players. Fair so, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll just think about. 
And another another team who have been impressive in the Premier League is West Ham. They might actually be fourth. They're playing Chelsea this weekend. Like, how have they changed from the Big Sam era to the Billage era? And they moved to a new stadium, so that's more potential for revenues. Um, it's one player. It's one player. It's just one player. Hayes? Mm-hmm. Who has been called up for the front squad, which thank goodness that has happened. I thought him and Deschamps didn't like each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I heard as well. Like they like he didn't like his attitude at Marseille, but like it looks like his like maybe his man his West Ham form yeah, has really changed his mind. He doesn't go to the Euros, and Deschamps is he's, he's just petty. Yeah, <laughs> good. Exactly. That's what you call it, petty. Yeah, literally. <laughs> what more? What more does he have to do? <laughs> Well, speaking about Deschamps, like he doesn't even know like which players are available because it was like raving about Koulibaly for Napoli and like Koulibaly has already played a couple of games for Cameroon. <laughs> so, yeah, and even like he might lose Laporte because like France, if France doesn't call Laporte and Spain does, like Laporte might have a chance. Nah, with, if, yeah. France, if France don't, then they're foolish because he's a, he's a feature. You obviously, Kurt Zuma is already injured. Sacco is trash. So, <laughs> I don't you think Baran, Baran, and of course, that will be in, like, oh, such a for the next, yeah, for the next 10 years, easy. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm thinking of now is who else would normally feel, I mean, Koscielny, I, I guess. Yeah. As well, like, um, Koscielny is the only one I could think of. Think of yeah, um, well. <laughs> but I mean, because Mangala, not a chance. No, after the season he said. But like let's let's divert back to West Ham and Paye. Like even like Bilic has been like very like praiseworthy about Paye. He was like he needed to learn poetry to describe mm-hmm. how Paye plays and stuff like that. And they had to give him a new deal as well. Yeah. Like do you, do you really see this team getting into like like this season in the Europa League they got knocked out like in August or July. But like if they get into the Champions League or the Europa League do you see them going maybe towards the quarterfinals? Or like Europa the, League. Yeah, Europa League. Definitely. Champions League, nah, not a chance. No a chance. Cham- Cham- nah, Champions League, I think they'll get embarrassed because it's the kind of thing like people are forgetting that the reason certain teams are looking so good now is because the standard of the league in general is so poor. Like, it's just the poorest I've seen the Premier League that I can remember ever. So, it's the kind of thing like when teams go abroad, mid-table teams in other countries will, will you know, will probably be beating teams who are around fifth, sixth place in the Premier League right now. <laughs> so it's kind of like, hey, if, you, if you just look at Tottenham's behaviour to um, the Europa League, I mean, for, um, what's it called, I don't, I don't really care how many injuries he had, but we, to put up the team, he did um, Pochettino in the first leg against Bayern, so against Dortmund. Like, how do you put a team like that and expect to get anything out of that? Like, you know, it, it's just like, they, they weren't taking the... I think Pochettino, which I think is the wrong thing to do, was thinking Premier League or bust. So he didn't actually look at the Europa League at all. Because for you to, you know, not play Kane, I think Delaney was injured, even though I think he might have been on the bench. You know, Lamella too on the bench. Like, so many people just... You know, sitting at and just don't understand why. But then I guess if you take it with the way he's probably thinking, he's like thinking to the fans, like, what would you rather take right now? The Champions League and the chance of winning the title, or you know, staying staying longer in the Europa League? Because they you know, Champions League is most probably pretty much already cemented. So the you know the the players and the team, you know, just. Everyone at the club kind of is really expecting them to play Champions League football next season. So, but kind of, should they really, yeah. should they really be that fussed with the Europa League? But Bob, isn't that a problem yeah. with um the British the English mentality? Shall I say in that like it's like for example, it's like it's not like a cohesive winner mentality. And like for example, the way Sid Lowe describes it, it's like they don't go for titles like just for the sake of going for the titles. They go for the title for the sake of another objective like for example like the Europa League it's like oh we're going we're, if you win the Europa League we're going to go into the Champions League but like it's it's also a league worth winning it's a yeah, league worth winning yeah. like, I can see how that yeah like it's probably like you're saying it's probably a better mentality to have 
to you know whatever competition we're in, we're gonna win it because you know that we play to win kind of thing. So yeah. And, and I, I, guess I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and I feel they missed an opportunity to actually really test themselves because this was something I was like really looking forward to. I was really looking forward to like seeing yeah, how good so our scores well, well, actually well. are. Because like if they had played a strong team, let's say they let's say they went out, they played a strong team, and they went out. At least they learned a the lesson. They like we played with our best players, and this then, is where we're short. You have to look at it this way: if they played the strongest team, and then straight after those games, if they didn't win those those Premier League games straight after the Dortmund games. People will be like, oh, see you as well, bro. You shouldn't be trying to win everything when we... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, but Bob, they, they had yeah. Villa and Bournemouth. Like and that's the thing. They, yeah. People think they have a big squad. They they have a big squad everywhere but up front. So Kane, you know, Kane can't physically start every game of a season. Sure. It's not, you know, it's not necessarily ideal. Yeah. So the Kane thing, I can understand because... If he gets injured, the season really is over. Yeah. And, you know, we need him for the Euros. So, you know, I'm sure some people, you know, will have um, Pochettino hung on the tree if, if Kane got injured. So. Yeah. And speaking about, like, their opponents, Dortmund, like, they have a, a club derby for the Europa League. How do you guys see that going? Are Liverpool done and dusted? Yeah, no, Liverpool are done, yeah. They're yeah. fine. <laughs> they are incredibly average. Like, even though they've beat us... You know, last week and they they drew with us yesterday. Even when they beat us two 0 it was I wasn't even angry that we had lost. I was angry because of how average Liverpool were, <laughs> and still let them beat us two 0 Like yeah. I was just like, so this is what we've come to. Like, nah, Dortmund. Will, uh, I feel like yeah, Dortmund will beat them pretty comfortably. So yeah. Well, one thing one thing I would say though is every single time Liverpool have faced big opposition, they have stepped up. Right. Considerably, and even though it is, it's still you can still see why. Man City they beat them, and uh, well, Manchester United home in a way as well. So, uh, well, they did they did well um, at home. So it's just like why you know if club can get them to play. You know, just like putting their all for like two games, then nah, I still see, I still see, but I still see Dortmund winning. Sorry, yeah. I never <laughs> spit that good. Yeah, and before we end this segment, let's check back with our mate Gary Neville. And uh, his team went out this went out on Thursday in the Europa League. It was quite sad because, like, I, I genuinely think, like, out of all the games Valencia played really well in that game, they were like really impressive. They played a fluid counter attacking game. And the the goal they conceded was through a handball, and it was just sad they had to go out to the Europa League. But which means that we have an, another all Spanish affair between Sevilla and Athletic. And like, I feel I feel Sevilla might go through in that. Although I'm a close to the Athletic fan, I feel Sevilla might go through because like, like like you said, Bob, it's their competition. Yeah, yeah. I just have to think about them in the Europa League. Yeah, but like in the final between Dortmund and Sevilla, like, who do you think? Sorry. In the final between Dortmund and Sevilla, like, who do you think will win? I think Sevilla might just win just because it's their competition. Even though it's sad in a way because they keep winning it, which grants you, you know, admission to the Champions League. But yeah. even then, they'll come third in, in their group <laughs> and go back to the exactly. Champions League. Yeah, like I saw this meme. It's like I. Like Sevilla coach Amari was talking to the players. It's like, like mates, th- this is the plan. We're going to get knocked out of group stages so we can get back to the, uh, get back to the Europa League. Literally, it's yeah. like, it's like do, do, do they don't want to be, do they don't want to be in the Premier League. It's like, sorry, in the Champions League. It's like, yeah, yeah well, yeah, just, just take us back, take us back, <laughs> back. Yeah, and on that note, we're going to end for this week. And it was interesting talking to you guys. We got through all the Europa League and Champions League ties, except for. Braga versus Shakhtar, but like, what do we know about Portuguese and Ukrainian football? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and on that note, we'll say adios and vamos. <laughs>